Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really cool pendant out of a simple cab. And you can see I have this container where I have various different types of stones and they're, you know, in various shapes. Most of them are ovals with a flat back, the cabochon. So what we're going to do is I'm going to choose one that I want to work with and you know I don't want anything like really too big or too small I'm gonna go with like a medium sized piece and I have lots of great green and I think that is serpentine and that's what I'm going to choose for our project today so if you have any type of an item that doesn't have a hole drilled into it something that you know like a stone or a crystal you know you can make that into a really cool pendant by soldering and I'm gonna show you how we do that the first thing I'm doing is gathering my supplies. I have some wide copper foil tape. I have a tool to burnish. I have scissors and then I have some sheet copper. Now mine's pretty old. I've had it for a long time and it's, it's pretty wrinkled, but you can easily straighten that out by using a burnisher or another tool like that. If you don't have a burnisher or a fid, you can use, you know, a wooden dowel works very well. And the other side of that is sticky. You can see some of mine is peeling up, but it is still usable. And this foil that I have is larger than the regular quarter inch that most people use for stained glass and for soldering projects. I'm going to peel this away. This is, like I said, a sticker back. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure it around our cab. And I decided to use that instead of the copper sheet, just because the area on the stone that I have isn't too large that we're going to cover. Using the copper sheet is a little bit of overkill at this point. So I'm going to hold the copper tape up against my stone and I'm going to hold it on the, the flat part on the back because that's just easier. And I'm going to carefully wrap it around evenly to try to measure it, giving it an extra few millimeters of space. I'm going to snip that off. And then we're going to apply the foil to the top of the stone. First, we peel the back away from the foil and then you're going to want to center it. So I'm removing like all of the back before I put it on because it's it needs to be kind of the center of the foil needs to be centered on the stone. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just try to eyeball it and figure out where I want to put it. Now I don't want to cover up too much of my stone and I want to make sure also at the same time that I have enough grab on that. So I have enough of the foil going over the stone so that eventually, you know, we don't want it to fall apart. We want it to be on there nice and strong. So I measure it across the front and I press it down with my fingers. And then when I get to the back, you can see that the foil ends kind of, you know, go down into a V shape and we don't want that. I mean, you could possibly do that if you, you know, want to do it that way, but I'm going to just very carefully and neatly fold those pieces up and trying to make it as straight as I can. Then I'll take my burnishing tool and I will gently burnish all the foil. And this is going to get all of those little wrinkles and creases out, at least most of them. And it's going to adhere the foil down to our stone nice and tight. When I get to the edges, I will press down those little ears that we have sticking up <laughs> and I'm going to just burnish those down as well. But before I do that, you know, I'll do the front, I'll do the back, I'll go over all the edges and you also have to be careful because you don't want to tear the foil. So you want to be gentle, but you want to be firm. Once I press those pieces toward the back, I again am going to burnish over those. Now there's a little bit that still needs to be covered up at the top. So all I'm going to do is cut another small piece of foil to go over that. You want to make sure that you are covering all 
uh, like naked areas of that stone. You don't want to have anything peeking through. You want to cut your foil a little bit larger than the space that you are covering. And again, I'm going to try to be very neat and just press it down, use my fingernails, use my fingers to go around it. This is something you don't want to rush. You want to take your time because if you rush in the end, you're not going to have a, as nice of a project. I promise you, if you take your time, you're going to have much better results. Once again, I'll pick up my burnishing tool and I will go over that foil very gently but firmly burnishing it down. And it's okay if you can't get every single crease out. It's going to have a little bit of folds in the back and a little bit of lumps and that's fine. Now to get our soldering started, I'm going to gather my tools. I have some liquid flux and a disposable brush. I have some lead free solder and I have an old pair of pliers that I only use for soldering. I am heating up my soldering iron nice and hot and I'm going to pick up a drop of solder and I'm going to just let it flow onto the foil. And every once in a while, I will have to reapply more flux because it evaporates as we're soldering. Once I do one side, I'll flip my project over and I'll do the other side, just applying some solder drop by drop to give it a nice even coating. Always wear safety glasses and a mask when soldering or working with any chemicals. And you may also want to wear gloves. Now this is too hot to hold and I use a paper towel if I need to. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to use the rubber stamp technique. You need a vulcanized rubber stamp. Those are mostly the dark red older stamps. And I'm going to heat up the solder and very quickly and carefully I'm going to press the rubber stamp onto the solder to get an impression. Sometimes it takes a few tries. And you know, if you don't like the way it comes out, you can just heat up that solder again and repress it. And I'm just giving it a little bit of texture. I'm not putting any particular design on or anything. It is a curved surface. It's a little harder to do. And the same with, I was gonna say a moment ago, using those pliers that I used to hold my project, since this is rounded on one side and flat on the other, it is just like impossible to hold with a pair of pliers. So that's why I use a bundled up, folded up piece of paper towel to help me hold it sometimes. So once I have some impressions on there, I did one on the back and I'm happy with that. And I'm going to add a bail. I am just going to add a regular jump ring. It's a twisted one. It's a little bit of a heavier gauge. And I'm gonna hold that with my soldering pliers and I'm gonna coat the entire thing with a coating of that flux. Now I use liquid flux, but there are different forms that you can use like paste flux or gel flux. I can apply my bail or my jump ring one of two ways. I can do it vertically or horizontally. And I like it this way. I like it kind of, I guess, I don't know if it's vertically and horizontally, but you can either do it with the circle facing one way or the other. And I'm just going to hold it there with pliers and apply a drop of solder as easy as that. Moving over to my sink, we're going to wash it up. I'm going to use a few drops of dish detergent on a fingernail brush. Dry it off very well and we are ready to apply a patina. Now I use an old plate and just a few drops of black patina and an old brush that I only use for applying patina and the same with the plate. I won't eat off of it after I use it with chemicals. It's only for that. You can see the metal instantly turns black once I start to apply it. I'm gonna go around and make sure that I get all the silver parts and turn them black. Then I'm going to let the patina rest on the project for about five or 10 minutes. Let it really soak in there while I clean up my plate and my brush. Once the patina has soaked on there and is very dry, I'm gonna move over to my sink and I'm going to wash it off again. And then I'm gonna grab a piece of stool wool. And after I dry my project, I'm just gonna buff it down. And what we're doing is we are removing all of the black patina from the raised areas and the black patina will remain settled in the crevices and it gives it a really cool vintage effect. And when I'm done, I'm gonna polish it up with a soft cloth and there's our pendant. I hope you enjoyed this project. I hope you give it a try and I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. 
I will be back soon with a new video for you. So have a great weekend and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.